Hello and welcome to this lesson on electrical resistance, usually just referred to as resistance. This is part one of a two-part lesson. In part one we're going to look at the basics, what resistance is, and some simple calculations. You will need a calculator and pen and paper to get the most out of this lesson. So if you want to pause and get one, now would be a good time. OK, let's start with some basic concepts. Take a look at the top circuit. We've got a single cell with an EMF of 2 volts. What that means is if we were to connect a voltmeter across this object X, it would read 2 volts. There's a voltage or potential difference of 2 volts trying to push a current through the object X. And the current which passes through X is 1 amp. So we've got 2 volts being applied to X resulting in a current of 1 amp. Look at the low circuit. I've changed object X for a different object Y. Still got 2 volts trying to push a current through, but in this case the current is only 0.2 amps. The current is 5 times smaller than it was for X. What conclusion can we draw? Well, it seems that it's more difficult to push the current through Y than it is through X. We use the same voltage, the same potential difference in both cases, and the current was five times smaller for Y than for X. And we say that the resistance of Y is bigger than X. In fact, the resistance of Y is five times bigger than the resistance of X because it only lets one-fifth of the current through compared to X. Let's see if we can calculate this more rigorously. For the top circuit, we say we define the resistance as being the voltage across something divided by the current through it. So this object X has got 2 volts across it. If I connected a voltmeter between the ends, it would read 2 volts. And the current going through it is 1 amp. If I connected an ammeter in series with it, it would read 1 amp. So the resistance of X is the voltage across it divided by the current through it. It's 2 volts per amp. I've divided volts by amps. And we give this unit a special name. We call it 2 ohms. And the symbol for ohms is a Greek letter. It's a capital omega. Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. So the resistance of X in the top circuit is 2 ohms. Do the same for the bottom circuit. What's the resistance of object Y? Well, divide the voltage across it by the current through it. 2 volts divided by 0.2 amps gives us 10 ohms. Note that the resistance of Y, 10 ohms, is 5 times bigger than the resistance of X, which was 2 ohms. Take a look at that very carefully, because this should give you a, a good handle on what resistance is. Let's look at a definition of resistance. Here's one. The definition is the resistance of any object is the voltage, the potential difference across it, divided by the current through it the voltage across it divided by the current through it. Simple as that. That's what we used in the calculation on the previous slide. We like to put this into symbolic form, so we use R to stand for resistance, V to stand for potential difference, voltage, and I to stand for current. We may need to rearrange the equation to give us different subjects, so that would give V equals IR, current times resistance. The current I can be calculated by taking V, the potential difference, and dividing it by R. And all these three formula need to be familiar. You need to be able to use them. To use the formula, of course, you've got to have everything in the right units. R, the resistance, must be in ohms, symbol capital omega. V, voltage or potential difference must be in volts, symbol capital V, and I, current, must be in amps, symbol capital A. What actually causes resistance? Well, it's caused by energy transfer. 
and it's electrical energy usually turning to heat, not always, and it's usually caused by collisions of the conduction electrons, the things that are flowing through a wire, if we're talking about a wire. The electrons collide with the atoms of the wire and lose energy. And it's this loss of energy, it's a sort of friction, which causes the effect of electrical resistance. And if it doesn't ring any bells, see the lesson on EMF and voltage, where we talk about energy transfers. It's worth noting that resistance depends on the size, shape, material that the conductor is made of. For example, if it's a piece of wire, the length, the diameter, the type of metal it's made of will affect the resistance. Also, physical conditions can affect the resistance. For example, a hot wire has a higher resistance than a cold wire. OK, let's try a simple calculation. Here's a circuit. We've got two cells to produce a battery. We've got two bulbs in series, a voltmeter connected across each bulb, and an ammeter. We only need one ammeter because the same current flows through both bulbs. They're in series. The first bulb, the voltmeter tells us the voltage across it, potential difference, is 2 volts. The second bulb, the voltage across it, which I've labelled V2, used a subscript, means the second bulb, V2 is, the potential difference is 4 volts. And the current which passes through both of them is 0.5 amps. And the question is, what is the resistance of each bulb? So if you want to pause the video, maybe you can just spend a moment and work out what the resistance of each of these two bulbs is. And I hope you get an answer that looks like this. The resistance of the first bulb well, resistance is the voltage across something divided by the current through it. So for the first bulb, it's 2 volts divided by 0.5 amps, 4 ohms. For the second bulb, the voltage is 4 volts. So we divide 4 by the current 0.5, and the answer is 8 ohms. Easy? I hope so. Let's try some more, slightly more tricky calculations. This is where you'll probably need a calculator. Here's a question, let me read it out to you and then you can have a go. When a potential difference of voltage of 7.1 millivolts is applied across the ends, that should say ends of a wire, a current of 25 amps flows. What is the wire's resistance? Do you want to pause the video? Try this one for yourself. Okay, I hope you got this answer. Resistance is voltage over current. The voltage across the wire is 7.1 millivolts. That means 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. And we divide that by the current, which is 25 amps, to give us 2.8 times 10 to the minus 4 ohms. You'll note that the data in the question, 7.1 and 25, were given to two significant figures. I've therefore rounded the final answer to two significant figures as well. Try another one. A current of 30 microamps flows through a 47 kilo ohm resistor. Kilo ohm is usually pronounced as kilo ohm. And we want to know what is the voltage, what's the PD across the resistor. So again, if you pause the video, you can try this one for yourself. OK, well, I hope you got an answer rather like this. V equals IR. We're trying to find V. So I, the current, is 30 microamps, 30 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. The resistance is 47 kilo ohms, 47,000, 10 to the 3 ohms. And that gives us 1.4 volts as the potential difference. Another one. A 7 mega ohm resistance is connected to a 10 kilovolt power supply. What current flows through the resistance? 
pause the video, try this. And this time we use I equals V over R, because we're trying to find the current I. V is 10 kilovolts, 10,000 volts, 10 times 10 to the 3. The resistance is 7 mega ohms, which is 7 million, 7 times 10 to the 6 ohms. And when we do the calculation, the answer is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Or, slightly more convenient format, 1.4 milliamps. Okay, that's the basics. Now, in part two, we'll take a look at the resistance of ohmic and non-ohmic conductors, and also how we can use graphs of voltage and current to get resistance.